and now it's time to name our seventh Wall of Fame person. And to do that, who can do that better than my favorite boss, colleague, Linda. So I leave the stage to her. Thank you, Magnus. Uh, it's been a great afternoon. I bet that all of you are pretty tired by now. I can, uh, I've been listening to everything and um, there's a lot of data, a lot of stuff, a lot of technologies and a lot of great speakers. So I really hope that you take this opportunity to either feedback to me or Magnus immediately uh, or email us after or use the polls. Um, so Magnus, this is a bit different. Um, normally we have Per Hedberg here, who's the chairman. He's with us mentally, digitally at least, I know that. Um, also, normally we stand in this, we're in the event space. We're three people instead of 300 people. I won't even mention why, you all know it. We're kind of ignoring it, doing it the best way we can anyway. So, six years. Um, which means, by with this weird math, that we're actually going to look at the seventh wall of fame. After that, stay tuned because we'll do a quick wrap up of things and uh, what we've done during 2020 and what we're planning for 2021. Without further ado, I'll get the secret envelope. Let's see if I can come to the next page. You can see we have a quite cool list of um, Wall of Fame. We started out in 2015 when we opened the house with Martin Graham from Maxis. We had uh, Jan Elvesjö from Toby. We've had Nicholas Haspia from HMS. Stina Ehrenstad from Ubico. Um, Sven Lindström from Midsummer, And Thomas Östen from Climon. So year number seven, I will read the motivation. Things, Wall of Fame number seven, to exceptional individuals who really made things matter. All right, so uh, let's see if you can, uh, who, who can guess who gets it first. Feel free to write in the chat. The massive electrification brings many challenges. In 2010, Wall of Fame number seven founded a company based on a now patented in innovation that improves the use of three phase supply and developed it into an advanced energy and power optimization solution for homes, real estate, and industry. The concept is a modular system based on a local DC nanogrid that enables flexible integration of solar PV, energy storage, small scale wind power, and charging of electric vehicles. In a unique solution, several buildings can also be linked together in a microgrid, power share. The result is a solution addressing challenges related to the current pun intended, energy transformation. The company has received numerous international awards, such as 2018 Global Clean Tech 100, and was listed on NASDAQ First North growth market in 2019. Dubbed as one of the fastest growing companies in Europe by Financial Times, with a current turnover of 77 million SEC, and with a market cap of 1 billion SEC, Farahamps makes their and our future look brighter. Wall of Fame number seven is Jan Janström, Founder of Ferroamp. Woo! <laughs> yes, we will add next year. We will actually add some audience sounds, like they do in in Melody Festival. So let's see if we have our winner with us. I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great, John. Excellent. So, uh, Thanks a lot for 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 this fantastic award, and uh, I'm I'm really humble to be part of such a distinguished uh, group of, of uh, successful entrepreneurs. Uh, so no thanks pressure, a lot. Yeah, no pressure, but you're, uh, there's like we, we chatted before, there's a whole bunch of Nobel Prizes around, but there's only seven Wall of Fame and things. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh, and um, we're really happy to have you here, kind of here. Uh, and the stage is yours for, for some time to share your story. I that's usually a really interesting part of, of uh, everything that happened behind the scenes during these years. Excellent. Uh, can you see my screen now? Um, I think you know, I have to. Um... All right, now. Can you see? Yes. Uh, yep. Okay. 
Um, so um, I'm, um, um, yeah, so as you, as you can see, I'm, I'm broadcasting from my basement now. So this is actually Ferramp's uh, first uh, office development lab and uh, pilot production plant. Um, fortunately, the, the company has moved out from my office now, um, but I, I'm back here for obvious reasons. And um, I, I wanted to, um, because Magnus asked me to, to tell you a little bit about the, the story and, and um, some of the, the moments that is sort of defining the Ferramp, I, I wanted to share uh, um, that through a series of, of postcards. And um, it, it's a mix of, of personal experience, some market insights and, um, and, and reflections. And one of the reasons why I've started a company was that I had bought this house, which I'm sitting in now, and being an engineer, you, tr you try to sort of see how can you tweak the system and reduce the electricity bill. Obvious, obvious things were to invest in a heat pump, efficient lighting, and that, that brings you just so far. But uh, there was one big part of the electricity bill that I couldn't really influence, and that was the fixed connection for being, for fixed cost for being connected to the grid. And that is sort of the, base of one of the first inventions that, that Ferrum was founded on. And this is still, still very much the case. The blue bar here represents the, the um, value of all the electricity being used in Sweden for one year. And the red bar represents the grid costs that customer pay to transport that electricity to their house. And, and this is what Ferrum is working on. So we're, we're developing a hardware and a software platform to integrate solar cells energy storage, electric vehicles, and with particular focus on, on reducing the, the cost of the grid. Uh, the next postcard is from our first um, installation. This is our first paying customer. Um, the, the green um, box there, that's our prototype. I think it's serial number two. It's a solar carport with a battery. And this was a complete disaster. Uh, I think the, the, the green box there on the wall, it blew up uh, two times and um, I think this summer we, we did four or five, six hour car trips um, to this customer to try to fix things. The flip side of that is that we learned a lot. We learned a lot about the complexity of managing these systems. And one particular thing I, I remember, which is sort of very defining for, for the company was that our competitor, they had 30 different models of, of PV inverters just to, to capture that segment because customers, some of them want solar cells, some want batteries, some have uh, big houses, some have small houses. And, and there is no way we as a small company could meet all of those different customer needs unless we come up with a modular system. So we essentially took this green box and we broke it down into three modular Lego bricks. And this is still very much the core of our technology that, that we use today. And this is sort of a second invention that came out of, of a physical problem of having to go six hour car trips every now and then. Um, and, and speaking of solar, um, I just wanted to share this with you. This is a recent example from, from Portugal. This is the, currently the world uh, record holder when it comes to electricity pricing. Um, this is not our installation, by the way, but but still, the interesting thing here is that the, the winning bid here is 0 0.01 euros per kilowatt hour. And there is no other energy source on Earth that can even come close to competing with, with this. So solar is already mainstream and it will just continue to grow from here on. The challenges here comes when, because all of the electricity generating at this place, it needs to be transported both in, in physical location, but also in time to, to where you need it. And that is partly where our solutions come in. Uh, the next postcard is from one of the international trade fairs uh, that we participated in. And um, I, I think that, um, I mean, if there is such a thing as, as the Nobel Prize in Renewable Energy, I would say it's the InterSolar Award. InterSolar is held in Munich every year. And this year, we, we were one of three winners. And I mean, winning the, this award was, of course, fun in itself. But I think was, what was more, even more fun was that the other two winners were LG Chem and SMA Solar Technology, the world's biggest manufacturer of batteries and the world's biggest manufacturer of solar inverters. And then it was a small startup company from Stockholm based in a cellar. So at that, point, uh, at that point, I thought that maybe, just maybe, we could also become a big industrial company someday. Um, 
And another postcard here is, is uh, that I remember quite clearly from last year. I think it was during the Eurovision, um, one of the, the contests leading up to the Eurovision song final. And, and I saw this picture in one of the TV commercials in the, in the break. And this is actually one of our customers and it's our installation. So it's solar panels on the roof. They have second life electric bus batteries in the basement and everything is interconnected using our DC grid, power electronics and software. So at this point I realized that, okay, yeah, the thing we're doing, they maybe just have an impact on, on reducing the CO2 emissions. Um, this postcard is from our stock market introduction, uh, which was pretty big in, in itself. But I think one of the things I remember more clearly from this point is that um, a couple of months before this, I actually brought in our first external CEO. I, I had lots of, of, of doubts and concerns and worries. And, and um, um, I think there were a couple of months where they were just sort of agonizing about this decision, but I finally took the decision to, to step down as, as CEO. And, um, uh, and I think that was a very good decision. Uh, I don't think we would have been where we are today if I hadn't done that. Um, uh, because then that allowed me to focus on, on technology and, and business development, which is closer to my heart. heart and, and, and we had a CEO that can focus on building the company, building organization, structure, uh, production, sales and marketing, financing, and all the other stuff, which from an electrical engineering point of view, isn't so att attractive. Um, one of the last market postcards I wanted to show you is concerning electric vehicles, because more and more of the things we are doing today are related to electric vehicles and electric vehicle charging. And, and I mean, it, the race is over. It's, it's no longer a question if the electric car will win. It's just a question of when. And, and it's, I would say it's almost down to the point where it's, um, we're not counting months. We're not counting years anymore. We're counting months. And um, in Norway, for example, 50% of the car sales are, are already electric. And one of the things which is so remarkable by, with electric cars from our point of view is not just that the, the, the car is a way of transporting people and goods, but because of the big battery, car is also a means of transporting energy, transporting electricity. So essentially you could call the electric car a grid on wheels and that opens up a, in, um, a tremendously amazing opportunities, really disruptive opportunities when you think about what other uses you can have for electric cars for batteries on wheels to compete with a hundred year old monopoly. And the last postcard I wanted to show you is this. Um, this is something that arrived at my doorstep yesterday. It's an Easter present from the company. And I wasn't even aware that, that we were planning to send out an Easter present to our employees. And so the company is starting to, to get life on its own. And, and I mean, just like your, your children, they grow up and they start to get the life of their own. They get their own friends. You don't need to worry about them brushing their teeth or, 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 or getting food on the table. Uh, just in the same way, Ferramp is, is becoming a, a young adult. And, and a lot of the things in the company are actually happening by themselves. I don't really need to worry about all the bits and pieces anymore. But, but just with, like with your children, you hope that when they grow up, they will still love you and they will probably need you, hopefully need you from time to time. So uh, with that last postcard, I would like to say thanks a lot for, for this amazing uh, award and, uh, and also for, uh, for the nice flowers that arrived today. And um, thank you for listening. Thank you, Bjorn, a lot for uh, sharing with us the history. And, um, as a bonus, yes, I'm, I'm in the wrong, wrong camera. I'm not used to this. Magnus has gotten used to this by doing it the whole day. Um, as a part of becoming Wall of Fame number seven, you get a lifetime Things Enterprise Circle membership for Farrow. Oh, wow. Yes. Thanks. Uh, is that a prize or what? <laughs> that so we for sure is. We would be happy if you accept that, and we would like to invite you into the family. I, I do. Brilliant. We take that as a, as a signature. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Thank you a lot, Bjorn. We hope to gather all our Wall of Famers here um, 
once we can gather again. We usually we try to create this uh, tradition, annual tradition, to actually meet up for a dinner and so on to keep track of what's happening in life. 